Hi, I'm David Ireland, the Wildlife Man. Welcome to episode number nine of the Wildlife Man podcast. Now today's story is sponsored by Kess Gallery. They have the most amazing aerial photography of the Sydney region. Now today's story is titled Hand Feeding of Sharks. Now I was around 15 when I had my first real shark encounter and I was spearfishing off Newport Reef near Sydney. I used to tow an inner tube of a tyre with a net in it. I'd tow that along and that's what I used to put the fish in when I was spearing. And this bronze whaler or dusky whaler came up, about two metres I guess, and it ripped open the net and took the fish in seconds. It gave me a terrible fright, but I was fascinated by this thing, like so fast, so efficient, and how its teeth were so sharp they could rip that net open and take all my fish in like just seconds. I was just amazed by these, these wonderful creatures. And when you think of it, sharks, taken over 300 million years of evolution. And there are so many different species. And I've been privileged to work with so, so many of these. From the strange Port Jackson sharks that actually lay an egg case and push it between the, the crevices of, of rocks. Many of the sharks have live born, but the Port Jackson still has an egg case. They're a very ancient, ancient species of shark. I've worked with the, the wonderful reef sharks, the coral lagoon sharks, that are so important to the health of coral reefs because they feed a lot on the, the fish that will eat the algae. And if you don't take them out or knock their numbers down, the algae can grow over the coral and kill the coral reef. So I've worked with those beautiful animals. I've also had the privilege to bait up and film the silver tips, these magnificent sharks. We worked in Polynesia on these 3,000 metre walls that just dropped down into the abyss. We went down 60 metres and we put baits there and these beautiful silver tip sharks came up. I think there was five, six or seven of them. And every, each one of them was pregnant. You could see their tummy bulging. It wasn't from food. And they'd brush past me to get to the bait, and I'm filming them. They look so beautiful, these deep water sharks. But I've also worked with bull sharks and the huge, huge whale sharks. Massive things. 17 metres long, the whale sharks. And we filmed them in Ningaloo, off Western Australia. But I've also filmed the cousins to the sharks, the big stingrays, manta rays, of course, but also the bull stingrays. And I've even had fed them, something that you have to be very cautious of with that deadly spines on their tail. But what has always concerned me so much was the devastation of shark populations by long lining and also that horrific shark fin industry, which is outrageous, killing so many sharks, thousands and thousands of sharks caught and their fins removed and thrown back in the ocean. What a shocking industry that is, the shark fin industry. So I'm big on conservation of sharks. But a shark that I have worked with, that we wanted to try and get protected is a shark that's an expert at ambush, a rather strange species, and there's a number of species in this group, and that's the wobbygog shark. And because I live in the Shire, we get some really big southern wobbies here, off the reefs here. They can grow up to eight feet or more, be quite big head, and they've certainly got plenty of teeth in those jaws. And they have the most insane camouflage. My God, the pattern on their body 
when they just sit quietly in a crevice or in the kelp, they're very hard to see. And what they do and how they catch their prey is really insane to watch. And I wanted to try and hand feed these sharks. But that is not an easy task. Because the Wobbegong shark actually launch forward and they snap so fast onto their prey. So they're sitting there in the kelp, maybe on the ledge, a ledge that might just drop into a deeper, deeper gutter. And the fish come along and they sit there very quiet and when they're like maybe half a foot a foot away they snap onto that fish with lightning speed so to hand feed one of these was going to be very difficult and the other problem i was going to have is i would have to shoot the footage the action in slow motion in other words very very high speed cameras and this i this I did on my own, mostly on my own. I'd go out off Cronulla with my, my dive boat when I had the dive shop. And the first job was to go spearfishing. And initially, I speared the wrong species of fish and I found Wobbegong were not interested. They prefer fish like Morwong and Snapper and Trevally. They like those sort of fish and kingfish. But some species of fish, like drummer, they didn't want to eat. So down I would go and I would do some spearfishing to get the bait for the Wobbegong sharks. And it's something I'm, I have to admit I'm pretty good at. I can do four minute breath hold, so no problems harvesting some fish to, to feed the Wobbegong shark. The next task, of course, I had to have an underwater camera. Initially, I was using the old Bolex cameras, the old wind-up 16mm cameras. They were a pain in the butt to use because they only had a 100-foot load. So you'd wind it up and it would only go for 10 seconds. Then you had to wind it up again. So you could only get 10-second hits. And you could only film a maximum of, of four minutes underwater because a 100 foot load doesn't last that long. So they're real hard to use. And I used to make my own housings out of Perspex. Eventually I had video cameras that made it a bit easier. So I literally have the camera in one hand and the fish in the other hand. And down I'd go. And I'll be sitting on the bottom and hoping the smell of the bait will attract a wobbegong shark. Often it would attract green moray eels. They come from everywhere. They seem to be under every rock. If you've got a fish in your hand, the morays come out. They're not real big. And out they come and they're attacking the bait and going crazy and ripping it all up and not much you could do about that. Because I'm feeding a bottom ambushing shark. So I'm kneeling on the bottom so, of course, the eels come from everywhere. But then eventually the wobbies would come. Some small ones, three, four feet long, metre. Some real big thumpers. And I had to be so careful. I'd have the camera in this hand and the fish in this hand. And I'm watching and there's almost no indication when it's going to launch that attack, that ambush, onto the fish. So I'd have to let the fish go within a split second, get my hand away, without my hand being in the jaws of a wobbegong shark. And that's not something I want, because years later, that's exactly what happened. I was actually hand feeding some grey nurse sharks, and I had a kingfish in my hand. A wobby came from behind, I didn't see it, it grabbed the fish and my hand. 16 stitches, it ripped me right up. So I know how painful, how much damage those wobby gong teeth can do. After a while, I got very good at it. I could almost anticipate when they were going to launch that 
that ambush attack. I'd hold the fish in my hand, I'd watch them so carefully, got the camera on, press record, watching, watching, and then the slightest movement, I'd let go of the fish and pull my hand away as the shark would take the fish. And it would happen in an absolute split second of time. I was getting the most amazing footage of the jaws opening, the teeth being thrown forward like this, and then taking the fish in slow motion. Just fabulous footage. We used it in a number of my Wildlife Man films shown on Discovery Channel. And again and again. But it wasn't easy. Sometimes I'd do a whole dive, I'm out there for an hour, I might be in the water half an hour spearfishing, and then I'm down underwater for nearly an hour, and I might only get one or two feeds. Other times I'd get maybe two wobbies, and they might take two or three fish each, and I'd get plenty of footage. Or the whole thing would just go belly up, I wouldn't get any sharks, and there'd be too many eels and I'd get nothing. But after a while, I was getting exactly what I wanted. This amazing shots of the wobbegong striking, opening the mouth, coming forward with blinding speed and taking the fish without taking my hand. We learnt so much about the wobbegong shark. We used the footage to promote the protection of the species to try and stop long lining of this species of shark. And the footage was used on Channel 9 on their 60 Minutes program. So it was well worth it. I'm so privileged to have spent so much of my life working with sharks, especially the ambushing shark, the master of camouflage, the wobbegong. As we explore deeper, we encounter numerous species of wobbegong sharks. The sharks of ambush are here in good numbers. Two metre spotted wobbegong is resting in a gutter. Unlike most sharks, she does not need to continually swim to oxygenate her gills. Although she seems docile, she can snap her lethal jaws with lightning speed. So patting her is risky. It's time now to surface and get the baits we need to hand feed these amazing predators. Now our goal is to get the wobbegong shark protected and also to aid scientists with much needed data about their prey and also their hunting techniques. Now to do so, we will attempt to hand feed all three species of wobbegongs with different types of fish and record their preferences. Now what we're about to attempt is extremely dangerous and I'll show you why. These are the jaws of a four foot long wobbegong shark. And you can see there are six rows of needle sharp teeth and they all face backwards. The jaws are driven by very powerful muscles. In fact, the muscle power of the wobbegong shark's jaws rivals that of a crocodile. Once a wobby snaps its jaws shut, it's almost impossible to prise them open. I do not want to get my hand inside the jaws of a wobbegong shark. The task before us is daunting. The current is getting stronger. Visibility is being reduced by the sediment. To add to our woes, poisonous needle urchins fill every crevice. It will be hard to avoid the painful spines while my attention is on hand feeding hungry sharks. Wobbegong sharks are being devastated by commercial fishing and need urgent protection status. Little is known about their preferred diet. Gaining this data is highly dangerous. As Steve McKinnon shakes the chum bag, anything could turn up. 
even a great white or bull shark could be attracted. A dwarf ornate wobbegong arrives unnoticed. His coloration perfectly matched the sea floor. He tears the fish in half and then swims between my legs and off down the reef. A more powerful spotted wobbegong arrives. As he swallows it down, I sneak a dangerous pat. Surprisingly, some fish are rejected. It is important we learn what prey these sharks prefer. If we are ever going to successfully protect the wobbegong, their prey must also be protected from overfishing. We change baits. Again and again, I am left in a cloud of blood, trying desperately to see what is coming next to snatch a fish from my hand. Now I deliberately challenge the sharks by refusing to let go. Their reaction is mixed. Some tug for a while, then surprisingly give up. Like us, they have different personalities. Some shark refuse to let go and wrench the fish from my hand. Whilst other sharks demonstrate their dominance and thrash the bait to pieces. To many people, a shark is a violent animal, when in fact their behaviour is a result of millions of years of evolution. They are not evil creatures, rather masters of survival. I feel an urchin's spine puncture my knee. The pain is intense, but I must not look down. The smell of the baits is attracting larger sharks from the depths. They exceed two metres. An accidental bite could easily sever arteries.
existence of these sharks is paramount to the future survival of many of the seafloor dwelling animals of Australia. Now, every week we will publish a new Wildlife Man podcast. I've spent most of my life working with a huge diversity of animals from the animal kingdom. So if you enjoy, please subscribe. Please share, like, and ring that notification button so you never miss a new story being published. And remember, all my films are available streaming on demand from Vimeo. So that's it from me till next week. I am your wildlife man.